This is Tech Gears, my name is Levi, and today there are some exciting news. Sony just launched their A9 III, so version three of their sports-specific camera. Now, none of these have been released to the press. No one has an early sample, at least yet. These are gonna be out early next year, supposedly by March and time for the Olympics with many shooters gravitating towards it because it has some specs that at least today, no other manufacturer is gonna be able to compete with. So we're gonna dive into some of those specs, some of the things we know, some of the things we don't know, and how that's gonna impact some of the other cameras we're excited for Sony to release in the future. So let's jump right in. If you're new to the channel, thank you for joining. Usually we do some tech reviews, gear reviews. This is the first time we're doing kind of a early pre-release and hopefully I can do it justice and answer some questions for you and maybe do it quicker than watching the Sony presentation. So the biggest news of the Sony A93 is the first global shutter released from any of the major manufacturers in a consumer line. So a global shutter allows zero blackout, no rolling shutter, and has benefits for both photo and video. One of the first things obviously is the zero rolling shutter, but now it's gonna be able to shoot at 120 frames per second, which is crazy with full raw and full autofocus tracking. Now, Canon does offer up to 195 frames per second on their uh, Canon R3, but that's with autofocus locked, which is really weird. I don't know how benefit or beneficial that can be. And then Nikon does offer 120 frames per second only in JPEG and only at 11 megapixels. And that takes us to the second I guess, uh, release. It is an all new sensor that is stacked at 24.6 megapixels. Now, global shutter was noted in the past as having poor ISO or low light performance. So I believe that essentially they stuck with 24 so it would still have good low light or ISO performance. We're not gonna know how good or how well that's gonna perform until it's been tested. And obviously you, like me, wanna see Gerald Undone's full review on this whenever he gets his hands on it. Another benefit of the global shutter is gonna be it now can shoot up to 80, not eight, 80,000 frames per second as far as your shutter speed, which actually does trump both Nikon and Canon. I believe Nikon allows up to 64,000, Canon 36,000, and unfortunately, Sony's been left in the dust with even their, I believe, A1 only allowing 8,000. So uh, going out to 80,000 is a huge deal. And even during the press launch or the press release, uh, the speaker did say they should have put a comma next to the 80 as opposed to 80000 because it does look like 8,000, like no big deal. But on top of that, they are allowing unlimited flash sync at any shutter speed, which again, no one has done. So this is gonna be huge for a lot of portrait photographers as well, not just for sports. So this is actually pretty revolutionary. Now on the video side, not only are you gonna have zero rolling shutter, which again, for sports applications, that's incredible. But this is gonna be the first Sony camera that's gonna offer 4K 60 down sampled from 6K which ironically enough, the Canon R6 Mark II and R8 have been doing. So it's good that Sony is keeping up and advancing when they're able, but they're also gonna be launching the first Sony camera that's 4K 120 with no crop. So usually there's a 10% crop or 20% crop depending on the camera you have. There is no crop on this. I'm excited to see, and what we don't know, is if the 4K 120 will also allow active stabilization, because that's something that's not allowed in the other cameras. Also, this is gonna be the first camera outside of the ZV-E1 that's gonna offer dynamic active stabilization, which is another step up. So just like when the R5 was released where the R line is for resolution, is more for photography, the A9 is more for sports and fast action, Sony's actually throwing quite a bit of really solid video specs at this camera. Now, one thing it's not going to have that the A1 and the R5 have is 8K. That may or may not be a big difference for a lot of people, but just to give you some idea. Also, Sony did not announce 
if the 4K60 or 4K120 will be allowed in crop mode. So the A1 does allow 4K60 in full frame and in crop mode, which is very unique. Usually it's one or the other. A7S III does 4K60 full frame, there is no crop. And the A7 IV has 4K60 with a full APS-C crop, but there's no full frame option. And the R5 is somewhere in the middle with the 20%. So the A1 still has that kind of unique advantage, being able to do both in 4K60 while offering 4K120 and 8K. So the A1 still has a little bit of an edge here and at 30 frames per second, it's no slouch. Now, speaking of those frame rates, Sony did have a little sample in their video there showing their high speed plus is gonna be 120 frames per second. Their high speed is still 30 frames per second. And then I believe it's probably gonna drop down medium to like 15 and 10. But what they're doing to take advantage of that 120, since you don't always need that, is they finally added a front button which is something i believe canon and i kind of been doing for ever that allows you to quickly engage that 120 frames per second mode so you can click that button have that speed when you need it and then go back down to the 15 20 30 or wherever frames per second you want to normally shoot at so they really have done a lot and in addition they've included an all new shouldn't say included but it'll be available vertical grip that completely mimics the same grip that you're getting finally as you would if you're shooting normally. So that vertical grip is gonna give you that same front button, the same new angle, new handle. Sony did say they did modify the grip a little bit and it's their most comfortable yet. We'll see once it comes in hand. Now two of the smaller things to come into it and again I say small because they've been available on other manufacturers are pre-capture that's something that obviously is amazing you can set that to 0 0.005 of a second all the way to one second so it is going to start capturing some of that image before you even press the shutter button again that is super handy not all new but all new for Sony as well as the EVF is now also matching that 120 frames per second but at full brightness so the EVF is going to be a version of that same fantastic EVS that we had in the A7S III that a lot of people keep forgetting. So many reviews are saying the R5 has the new great EVF and it's an upgrade over all the other cameras. No, it's essentially the same similar high resolution EVF we got in the A7S III, then the A1, then the R5, and now we're getting the latest version of it that's improved even more so on the new A9 III. The last thing is gonna be an upgrade for video, but also really for photography as well, showing as the R5 has been able to take photos as slow as, I think, one over a fourth of a second or something like that. The, the new image stabilization or IBIS is now up to eight stops in body, not even taking into account what it would be when you add some of the lenses that do have image stabilization built in, such as their telephoto lenses or the 24 to 105. So I'm surprised Sony didn't boast how high it would be when you add those lenses. But needless to say, it's gonna be eight stops, which is really impressive. That combined with the dynamic steady shot, this is something that, again, they're boasting that you can definitely do handheld shots for video, and again, this is looking to be a really nice video camera, albeit I'm wondering some of the specifics on how well it's gonna do in low light, how is the ISO performance, and how they're going to differentiate it or make the AF7 S4 even better. And in talking about other cameras, the A7S III and the A1 are officially getting updates, and this is a commitment from Sony by March of 2024, where they are going to finally add the breathing compensation to both cameras, which is something that's been widely wanted and needed, as well as whatever other updates they're gonna put, but Sony is fully backing these cameras, the A7S III and the A1, to get some of the newer features that they've been adding to every other camera that obviously is much less more less expensive than either one of those. But the A9 III does draw into question, what is Sony gonna do for their A7S IV and A12? Are either of these cameras gonna get the global shutter? Are they somehow gonna make the A1 faster than 120 frames per second? Is the low light performance on the A9 III gonna be anywhere close to the A7S III? And on the A7S IV, are they gonna increase the megapixels or keep it the same like they do with the A9 III? And as a video shooter, I'm happy to see that the A7S III is gonna get new life. But as far as the A7S IV, 
are they going to add some oversampling? Are they going to add 240 frames per second to 4K and 480 to 1080? Uh, I would love to see them add that similar 24 megapixels to the A7S III, but not sacrifice that low light performance. I don't know if that's possible. And on the A1, if they're going to make that all encompassing, are they finally going to put 8K60 like Nikon have given us? Are they going to put in internal RAW on the A1 and do 150 frames per second for photos? But needless to say, the biggest, I guess, eye gouge and or eye opener is is that price the a93 is going to be coming out at 5999 us dollars and i have no idea what that's going to be worldwide but that is a big jump it is 500 dollars less than an a1 although the a1 has been discounted a few times before and very intermittently and I think the A93 is going to surpass the A1 in a few areas, although the A1 is still going to give you a 50 megapixel image from that sensor, as well as that 8K, and we'll see the differences on what the 4K image produces once those are in hand. So the A92 was 4,500. This is a $1,500 price jump. I can totally see the A12 going up to upwards of 8,000, and I hope I'm wrong. And I absolutely can see the A7S IV going from the 3,500 to 4,500 or 5,000, especially if they're gonna be using that global shutter in all of these cameras. And then if they don't, does that make the A93 a little bit better video camera than those? And then now that Sony does have a global shutter in its repertoire, are they gonna start putting that in pretty much all of their cinema line? Because to have something where you have no rolling shutter is something that a lot of videographers really want in their cameras. On top of, of course, Sony, if you're listening, internal NDs on something like the FX3 version two or FX30 or anything that's considered a cinema camera. With that all said, hopefully you guys took away some input. If you have any questions, put it down below. Not sure how many I can answer but this was an exciting day for Sony and I'm really even more excited to see what the images are coming out as for video, for photos, how it stacks up and when they're going to start sending it to some of the uh, influencers because I know that's probably going to be another three, four months before it gets into anybody's hands. But well done, Sony. The A93 looks amazing. They did happen to also announce the 300 mil GM at 2.8. But that's something that has been widely rumored notated with a lot of leaks so that really wasn't much of a surprise or big news gap but the reviews are on that and other channels so if you are interested in that check those out as always thank you guys for tuning in thank you for watching the channel and uh consider subscribing this is levi with tech ears and i'll come at you later